I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Would you like to be seated? I'd just like to welcome you all to the Aspen Chapel. My name is Nicholas and I'm the minister here at the chapel. We're here to give thanks for Greg's life. We're here, all of us, to remember him, to commend him to God, to commit his body to the ground and to stand with his family and friends and be of comfort to them. We're going to begin with a prayer. O oh God, Lord of life and conqueror of death, our help in every time of trouble, comfort us who mourn and give us grace in the presence of death to worship you, that we may have sure hope of eternal life and be enabled to put our whole trust in your goodness and mercy. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a piece of organ music. <laughs> I just want to say thank you all for being here. Uh, Dad, we've been honored to have you all here. I, uh, I wear this kilt to honor my ancestors, my lineage. At this time, I want to offer gratitude to all that they fought for, all that they lived for, all that they loved. Thank you for welcoming my father, our father, into your fold. My father was a brilliant man. If he gave him only two options, he would always find the third. <laughs> he made a career out of crafting ways of doing things that no one else thought of. 
because he took the time to discover them. We had so many adventures as children. He would have us close our eyes when we were little uh, <clears throat> so that we could, uh, <laughs> he would have us close our eyes and go the secret way to bed at night under tables that were secret caves and over couches that were bridges over swamps filled with crocodiles. When I was 12, Dad, has, Dad had us both learn to scuba dive together so we could explore the world under the water. To this day, those memories of exploring under the sea with Dad filled me with so much awe and wonder and such deep gratitude. He took us on so many adventures to beautiful places, the Galapagos Islands, Machu Picchu, I remember piranha fishing with him in the Amazon and uh, exploring the canopy of the rainforest. So many wonderful and marvelous things that looking back really had me fall in love with this world. And then dad moved here, unquestionably one of the most beautiful places on earth. Dad loved Aspen and Aspen loved dad. Me too. As with all relationships, ours had its challenges. At some point, I had the profound privilege of realizing that I am wholly responsible for the stories that I created about Dad, that he didn't love me or support, support me. I got to see that that wasn't true. And I got to create a relationship with him of unconditional love where there was nothing between us. Not that everything was perfect after that. This is life, and we're all stumbling through it. But that spirit did pervade the rest of his days. And it grew stronger, even now. The challenges of watching Dad succumb to Parkinson's, want to do things that he could no longer do, was brutal. As I'm sure Billy and my sisters can attest. But even though it was challenging and frustrating to be with Dad and watch his decline, the thing that pervaded was his love and his zest for life. No doubt, it is incredibly hard to watch anyone go through a disease like that, but Dad did it with love. In this world where there is so much resignation and cynicism, Dad was a beacon of hope. Someone who truly believed in and loved life to the fullest. My dad taught me many things, but above all else, he taught me compassion and love. I am profoundly fortunate to be the son of my father and my mother, to have two incredibly intelligent, powerful, and loving sisters, and to have Billy, or Mama Son, who stood by and made dad, made sure that dad got the best care possible and loved us as her own children. We all love dad, and we got to be there when he passed. What a privilege. During that time, I wrote a song for him, which I'm going to do my best to share with you now. Sometimes I said these things in life for the sweetest. Sometimes the sweetest are so sad. Now the time we had or didn't have is over. All I can say is thank you, Dad. I want you to know how much I love you. Shake it, don't feel fair. Just can't shake it. 
Been an honor to have known you. Watch the journey of the heart. For many clothes that you did open. Till the day you did depart. I want you to know how much I love. Wish you well, I wish you freedom on your journey So you don't linger here all twelve If the devil tries to take you No, I will rescue you from hell Yeah, I will rescue you from hell Want you to know how much I love you. Want you to know how much I care. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Even though endings are beginning, I just can't shake it. Don't feel fair. Just can't shake it. Don't feel fair. Just can't shake it. Don't feel fair. Hello everyone, thanks for coming. I'm Stacy, I'm Greg's eldest daughter. So, growing up as a child with a powerhouse father, um, intellectually witnessing dad's decline in the last few years was at times painful. But to me, mostly it was strangely inspiring. The technical name for what dad's Parkinson's was causing is dementia. But in Dad, it mostly manifested as something way less scary sounding, more like mindfulness. It did mean he couldn't track his own or his family's problems or plan for the future. But on the other hand, he seemed to enjoy the present more than most of us, savoring simple pleasures and displaying friendliness to everyone around him. Not unlike his grandson, Jasper, who shares a similar attitude. And he still had moments of great clarity until the end. When we were in the hospital and he was, um, you know, non-responsive, I got on the phone with my siblings who were not that yet, yet, yet there, and I walked out of the room because I wanted to discuss what was gonna happen next, what we were gonna do. And the nurse walked out, and this was after four days in the hospital, and she said, your dad just opened his eyes. And I knew that it was because I was on the phone with my siblings and I had left the room and he wanted to know what was going on, so I brought them back in. A few years ago, after Dad fell and broke his nose and fractured some ribs, I called on Zoom to ask how he was. From behind a black and blue face, he said without missing a beat that he was doing great, doing great. I said, Dad? You've got a broken nose and ribs. Are you really doing great? He laughed, and it hurts to laugh with broken ribs. So we laughed some more. Last Sunday, after a grueling and utterly frustrating work week for me, I went searching for my own dose of mindful presence. And seemingly randomly, 
although I will say that Billy, Billy and, and Sharon had gone to this and told me to go. I found myself at the Neil Diamond musical on Broadway in New York City. Now, if you know me, you will know this was not my first choice. But as the audience jumped up from their seats and sang along with Neil's most famous lyrics from Sweet Caroline, I found myself transported back 40 years into the largest station wagon ever built, the Land Cruiser, bright white with sleek, fake wood paneling on a summer road trip with dad, mom, my siblings, and an eight-track cassette player blaring, Sweet Caroline, ba, 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 good times never felt so good. And as the Broadway audience shouted, so good, so good, so good, tears streamed down my face as I realized that it was Father's Day. And dad was shouting right there along with them. In that moment, I realized that dad had actually been doing great, doing great all along, and that his unflagging optimism and perseverance, even in dark times, and especially in dark times when life hurts, colored my childhood and my adult life in magical ways. It's my intention to carry that spirit out of this church and into the world in his honor. And I hope that his example inspires you to walk a little lighter yourselves today. Hi, I'm the middle child. Hey, we're not going in order here, the shortest. Um, so it's been said, and I will repeat, and you all already know this, our father Greg was a truly inspiring, ingenious, and creative man of many colors. He loved art, music, and the work that fascinated him. And even before the famous Academy Award parties that Billy and Dad hosted, he loved to entertain. His latest and greatest speaker system was always the envy of visitors, though no one could ever figure out how to use it. Still true to this day. At the annual New Year's Eve party in the 1970s, Dad made a punch bowl of an enormous fountain and added dry ice, so the floor of our entire house was a foggy mist. And he really managed to bring magic and sparkle to all occasions. It was sort of a special gift. As much as Dad liked to have a good time, he liked to work. He would pull all-nighters regularly, typing away on his Wang word processor in the basement. He was determined to make his mark and lived true to the bumper sticker on his Oldsmobile Tornado in Omaha, which said in bold black letters, go for it. He did. And he has a bench in his honor with these words on it at the Aspen Historical Society in the works. A tribute for our, for our family. As you can imagine, Dad, um, our dad, Greg, was a super fun father, bringing his out-of-the-box approach to parenting. Okay, this was a bit about that secret way that was already referenced, and my siblings and I had a lot of overlap on our memories, so I'm not going to tell you about that again, but that was only one of the many ways that he brought his own sort of original spin on things into our household and our family. But he wasn't just fun, he was truly loving. When I was about seven years old, I left my cherished teddy bear, actually a stuffed lion, on a bus at Boston's Logan Airport. I was completely distraught because this lion meant everything to me. As I sobbed on the airport sidewalk, dad immediately went into superhero mode, jumping on every shuttle bus that came through. 
until eventually he did indeed find my treasured lion. Dad cherished our family vacations and drove us through the Great Plains to the Rocky Mountains many times in the aforementioned station wagon. He always promised a dollar to the first kid to spot the mountains. How apt it is that we find ourselves here enveloped in the sheer magnificence of Aspen. Soon after Dad crossed over, I happened upon this quote from John Denver, etched on a beautiful rock in John Denver Park. You can see it for yourself. And it reads, death is not an ending, but a symbol of movement along the path upon which we are all traveling. As it may be painful to lose contact with the physical aspect of the one we love, the spirit can never be lost. We have been and always will be a part of each other. Indeed, Dad's spirit is with us now and always. One person who can certainly vouch for that is his stunning sweetheart, Billy Irwin. Most people know Greg was a brilliant attorney and businessman, but his genius extends well beyond his professional prowess. Somehow he had the intelligence to lay roots in what he called the best town in the whole wide world. Aspen, of course. And to follow that, he found the woman of his dreams, beloved Billy. The partnership wasn't just meant to be, it was magic. Dad enjoyed an almost two decade heyday that couldn't have been served up by anyone else. They were always having fun, entertaining, and giving back. Thanks to Billy, who was equally brilliant as a professional hostess, friend, family member, and Florence Nightingale in her own right. As Dad's Parkinson's disease progressed, Billy had his back 24-7 like glue. She sacrificed herself and doted on him with unwavering devotion. Billy made sure Dad got to go everywhere, see smiling folks, and have the most fun possible. She surrounded him by friends, loved ones, and angelic caregivers, providing a, social, a, a sparkling social life vital to his health and longevity. Not only that, but she somehow ensured that no matter where he went, he looked, like, he looked as stylish and handsome as a movie star. Dad's exuberance was matched by Billy's care for him, day by day, step for step. Words cannot express how grateful we are to you, Billy, not just for literally giving Dad life, but for giving him his best life. Please come up and say a few words. I hope I can pull this off. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Okay. On August 28th, 2006, at the uh, Aspen Historical Grounds, Greg and I recited our vows in sickness and in health till death do us part. Greg and I walked this walk for 22 years. Every day was a gift, and Greg being the rebound king, he was fought a very long battle with Parkinson's, with style and grace. He actually had Parkinson's when he was 50. That's a long, very long time, he died at 82. Um, in spite of it all, he was an inspiration to me and others with his positive and upbeat attitude. In fact, he was taking his weekly bongo lessons uh, the day before he was hospitalized. Greg, Greg was an absolute yes, can do man. For example, I would ask Greg if he wanted to dress up for a costume party. Greg would never miss a costume opportunity. As witnessed by all when he took first place at the Sarasota Yacht Club Elvis contest later last December, he couldn't wait to tell everyone that he won it 
fair and square. <laughs> Even though it is in a wheelchair. Okay. Um, and, and he did have the best costume. And then there was, how about zip lining in Belize? He'd say, you bet. How about the circus? Absolutely, with the enthusiasm of a six-year-old. In other words, in spite of his debilitating illness, Greg made the most of his life, which contributed to his success in life. He always said, when you say no, there goes another possible opportunity. This is a poem I'm going to read, and uh, it's called, When Tomorrow Starts Without Me. When tomorrow starts without me, and I'm not here to see, if the sun should rise and find your eyes are filled with tears for me, I wish so much you would cry. Sorry. The way you do today, while thinking of many things we didn't get to say. Sorry. I know how much you love me as much as I love you. And every time you think of me, I'll know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow comes without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand and said, my place was ready in heaven far above and that I had to leave behind all those I dearly love. But as I turned to walk away, a tear fell from my eye for all my life. And this is true. I always thought I didn't want to die. I had so much to live for and so much I yet to do. It seemed almost impossible that I was leaving you. I thought of all the yesterdays, the good ones and the bad. I thought of all the love we shared and all the fun we had. We sure did. <laughs> if I could relive yesterday, I thought just for a little while, I'd say goodbye and kiss you and maybe see you smile. But then I fully realized that this could never be, for emptiness and memories could soon take the place of me. And when I thought of worldly things that I'd miss come tomorrow, I thought of you, and when I did, my heart was filled with sorrow. And when I walked through the heaven's gates, this is the good part, I felt so much at home. And when God looked down, this is really the good part, and smiled at me from his golden throne, God said, this is eternity and all I've promised you. Today your life on earth has passed, but here it starts anew. So when Greg looked down on me, he said inside his heart, when tomorrow starts without me, don't think that we are far apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right there in your heart. God speed my love. And I'm so happy to go to the historical grounds. And it's where we got married. And uh, it was a good day. So that's all. I'll see you there. I'm Sharon, Billy's daughter. 20 or so years ago, I was blessed to become part of the Irwin Nelson family. I was lucky enough to get a bonus dad who really, truly loved my mom, as well as two new sisters and a bro. Jeff, Stacy, and Faith, I loved your dad. I really did. He was very kind and generous to me and my two children, Justin and Lauren. We've shared so many good times and funny, funny moments through the years that I will always cherish. We especially grew closer during COVID when I took on the role of this caretaker during lockdown. So that was my mom and Greg, 24 and seven. We could talk about that later, we had a really good time. <laughs> Greg really loved and inspired me with his cheerful disposition and positive and joyful attitude despite his limitations with Parkinson's. Every day was like Groundhog's Day when he would wake up with a big smile and say to me, hey, I have an idea I want to talk to you about. <laughs> Every day. He loved creating new ideas, and he had some brilliant ideas and some crazy ideas, and his passion for creativity and out-of-the-box out of thinking is really what made him tick. 
I can't tell you how many times he wanted me to get on the phone and call Warren and Susie Buffett <laughs> with, the best, with the next best idea that he had. He also loved innovation and technology and always wanted to have the latest and greatest gadgets, and he had them. Best Buy was his favorite place in the whole world. <clears throat> and honestly, he could spend hours and hours there. He absolutely loved Best Buy, and I just love I took that picture of him in front of Best Buy, and look at that smile. For Christmas, I wondered, what do you get a guy that pretty much has everything? Well, I got him that shirt, and now he would always be remembered by me as Best Guy. So rest in peace, Greg Daddy. We will miss you and your wonderful smile, and we look forward to seeing you again at the big party in heaven. Thank you very much. Patience. <laughs> yeah, let's go. So, uh, again, hello, I'm Faith the middle child, and I'm up here with my little family. Um, my husband, Eric, who's over there, he and I just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. Uh, and then we have my eldest, Max, and uh, this is Ned. <laughs> so what are we doing up here? There's one reason that we're performing together for you right now, and that is that Dad asked for it. When I was in psychology school, I was given this document, it was like eight pages long, called The Five Wishes, and it was about end-of-life decisions. And I circulated it among some family members and gave it to Dad, and you know, he didn't really have time for all that boring stuff, so he skipped all the questions except for one, the fun question, which was, um, I wish for the following to be said, read, or sung at my memorial service. And he simply wrote Paul Simon's Graceland. Well, so here it is, Graceland by Paul Simon. Mississippi Delta, was shining like a national guitar. I am following the river down the highway through the cradle of the Civil War. I'm going to Graceland, Graceland, Memphis, Tennessee. I'm going to Graceland. Poor boys and pilgrims with families, and we are going to Graceland. My traveling companion is nine years old. He's the child of my first marriage. But I've reason to believe we 
we both will be received in grace then. She comes back to tell me she's gone. As if I didn't know that. As if I didn't know my own bed. As if I'd never noticed the way she brushed her hair from her forehead. And she said, losing love is like a window in your heart. Everybody sees you're blown apart. Everybody feels the wind blow. I'm going to Graceland, Memphis, Tennessee. I'm going to Graceland. Poor boys and pilgrims with families, and we are going to Graceland. And my traveling companions are ghosts and empty sockets. I'm looking at ghosts and empties. I have reason to believe we all will be received in grace land. There's a girl in New York City who calls herself the human trampoline. And sometimes when I'm falling, flying, or tumbling in turmoil, I say, whoa. So this is what she means. She means we're bouncing into Graceland. And I say, losing love is like a window in your heart. And everybody sees you're blown apart. Everybody feels the wind blow. Graceland. I'm going to Graceland. The reasons I cannot explain, there's some part of me wants to see Graceland. But I may be obliged to defend every love, every ending, or maybe there's no obligations now. Maybe I have a reason to believe we all will be received in Graceland. So let's pray. Let us entrust our brother Greg to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. O God, before whose face the generations rise and pass away, we praise your name for all your servants departed this life in your faith and fear and especially for your servant, Greg. We thank you for all your goodness and loving kindness to him throughout the days of his earthly life. 
for all that he was and for all that he accomplished by your grace. And that now for him, sorrow and sickness are no more. And death is past. And he lives forever in your loving care. Amen. God of hope and giver of all comfort, we offer to your tender care those who mourn the loss of loved ones. Give them the peace that passes all understanding and make them to know that neither death nor life can separate them from your love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rick is now going to come and sing the Lord's Prayer. Just grab this. Um, I'm Rick Schuler, and uh, I thought of Greg as I called him Greg Daddy, like y'all did, and a uh, very affectionate and dear, dear friend. And uh, it's a great honor to sing this song and any song in the future that my Aspen mom would like me to sing, Billy. So I'm going to sing this song, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew, for you. Greg used to love me doing that, and I'd like for you to sing that with me in English when I'm finished. Avinu Shabbat Shemayim Yikadash Mecha Tavo Malchutecha Ya'aser Tzonecha Ba'aretz Kashenasa Vashemayim Ten lanu hayom Lechem ukenu Uslak lanu et ashmatenu Kasher salahim anachnu lash ashmalenu Vav in irulini masah Kiim hatsulenu min hara Ki lecha Hamam lecha v'hag v'da v'hatvedit le'olamei olamim. I like you to sing this with me in English. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We love you, Greg Daddy. So after the 
service when we finish. The family, immediate family, will go to the graveside for a little ceremony there. And we just ask everybody else to gather at the Aspen Historical Society at 620 West Bleecker Street uh, for a reception and to wait uh, the return of the family. Just a couple of prayers. Father of all, by whose mercy and grace your saints remain in everlasting light and peace, we remember with thanksgiving those whom we love but see no longer, and we pray that in them your perfect will may be fulfilled. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. during kind of my darkest times during the pandemic and um, as I was searching for something to say this poem just kept coming back to me um, it feels a lot like words dad might have said to us it's called the facts of life it's by Patrick Oduma Patrick Oduma yep <laughs> that you were born and you will die that you will sometimes love enough and sometimes not that you will lie, if only to yourself. That you will get tired. Fine. That you will learn most from the situations you did not choose. That there will be some Man. things that move you more than you can say. That you will live. That you must be loved. That you will avoid questions most sure, urgently sure. in need of your attention. That you began as the fusion of a sperm and an egg of two people who were once strangers and may well still be. That life isn't fair. That life is good and sometimes even better than good. That life is often not so good. That you will learn to live with regret. That you will learn to live with respect, that the structures that constrict you may not permanently be constricting, that you will probably be okay. 
that you must accept change before you die, but you will die anyway. So you might as well live, and you might as well love. You might as well love. You might as well love. Mama. And a prayer from Sylvia. So everyone, um, I just want to let you know, my name is Pastor Sylvie, and dear friend of Billy, and I hope a good friend to everyone else here. And I want to let you know that the evening that Greg passed away was amazing. It wasn't sad, it was joyous. And um, Jeff got out his guitar and played. And then they did something I had never seen as a pastor before. They said, this is gonna be a little odd, but bear with us, our father would love this. And they turned on the boom boom box and they started to dance. And for the next five or six minutes, they just played songs that they knew their father and Billy's husband would have liked to dance to. And we just sang. And it was beautiful. And then we went to dinner. And then they ordered something. What was the dish that your father would always order? Crab, Crab rangoon. Yes, we <laughs> ate those and we toasted him in his honor. And then the next morning they said to me, don't worry, we're gonna be okay. And then I got a text saying, dad just took his last breath, please come. And I gotta tell you, when you see someone that has passed, it is for each person present it is a spiritual moment and everyone gets to go through that spiritual encounter on their own and um, there were tears but there was also the sense of relief that they knew that their father and that their husband had gone peacefully and it was just the most extraordinary experience i've ever experienced as a pastor it really really was so um, there is a, uh, a passage in Ecclesiastes, um, and this is what I read at my father's funeral. There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, and a time for war and a time for peace. There is a time for everything what I felt so strongly in getting to know especially the children was and I felt so strongly he would want us to keep dancing for him yes grieve him but know that he is no longer in pain that he is with his spiritual father in heaven and that spiritually I know that that Billy shared with me twice now she saw this little bird that spoke to her my father was a scratch golfer, and every time I play golf, I hear my father whisper, keep your head down, silly. Stop staring at the ball. Keep your head down. <laughs> I hope in so many ways that Greg will continue to show up in that wonderful, pleasant way he had. Go for it. Because I know he doesn't want us to be sad today. It's a celebration of life. He loved these mountains. He loved each and every one of you in a very, very special way. If I heard anything from the service today, was I heard that he would want you to continue to live your lives in peace and serenity and to embrace each other and to know that his spirit lives on with you. I believe that heaven is just this close to us. The Lord says in his word that he is a breath. So I pray that you'll remember that he's always with you. Close your eyes. I just wanna say one prayer on behalf of your father. Lord God, we come before you in Jesus' name. And Father, we lift up this family. Lord, I know that you have a wonderful plan for each and every person here. Father, I pray that they will leave this place today with a new strength in their spirit, knowing that they're going to go forth and make a difference in their lives. Lord, Greg was like a little pebble that had a ripple effect that was amazing in Sarasota and in Aspen. 
Father God, may we continue to honor him in all of our ways and to remember that his final words would be, go for the party, enjoy your life, rejoice, and know that all is well. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I love you. So having commended into the hands of God, our brother departed. We now commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, putting our whole trust and confidence in the mercy of our Heavenly Father and in the victory of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who died, was buried and rose again for us and is alive and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 So at this time, we're going to invite the family to take a rose and put it on the grave of uh, Grace. Billy, would you like to start? I feel like First, you want to go up with with Billy. You can. Patricia.
Who's ever not given a rose? This is for everyone, <laughs> and especially that. that teddy bear, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Greg would have loved that. Greg would love that. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> 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 right? Your father would say, "Not a rose is not going to be going on my grave." <laughs> That was darling. <laughs> it would have loved wow. that. Yeah, it would have loved it. <laughs> More roses. More roses. <laughs> More roses. And what song would he have us sing? Graceland or? How about if you can. Okay, Billy, start us off. Did they go up here? I didn't see him do it. You want to sing it here? He would love it. You want to help me with this? Sure. Come on. You want to help me sing? No. Let's go. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stop feet. If you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! I have something to say. I hope it's not too soon, but it will happen that I'm going to be next to you for eternity. For eternity. Eternity is a very long time. Yep. Eternity. Wow. Eternity. Eternity is a very long time. Very long time. <laughs> Thank you for a beautiful, beautiful children. Thanks for being our one and only unk. <laughs> Incredible memories. He and I always shared a lot of scotch, so it's time for a scotch. <laughs> We love you, Papa. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvie. And Father, thank you. So I'm going to say for my daughter, because she's not saying anything, that this is the first time I've seen her cry. Like, she doesn't cry. <laughs> Thanks for that. Thank you, Grandpa. When you hit the phone, you cry. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel his spirit with us right now? Yeah. yeah. It is an extraordinary experience to feel the spirit of someone who's passed and know that all is well. He's not in pain anymore. And he just wants so much for all of you to be happy and to be gracious to each other, to be loving, and to just recognize that we are in the presence of someone that has passed it is a holy moment it's true and if there's anything that you have against anyone or anyone in your life just let it go life is so short so so short and i just pray like i said before that every day you just remember what an honor it was to have each other in your lives life is so short and live like it is your last day. This is the most extraordinary place I've ever been in terms of the beauty. So find your special spot and remember him. Every time I play golf, I see my father. And it's wow. an extraordinary thing. I have a better relationship with my father now that he's passed than during his life. 
because he was a very busy attorney. But now when I go on the golf course, I can hear him. I know if there's a golf course in heaven, my father's a scratch golfer who's playing. And I know Greg in heaven is, is leading the band for the biggest party up there and having a great time. So let's join our family and friends out there and have fun. And just remember that he loved you all so very, very much. So much. Greg, you would be with all of us forever. <laughs> Greg, thanks for always helping all of us and being the best friend one could dream of. I love you, Greg. Uh, hey everybody, if you have anything you'd like to say about dad, if you have maybe a, a fun story that you'd like to share about dad, about Greg Irwin, we would love to have you come up and say something. I can either come to you or you can come up here. Is it? Yeah, it's great. If anybody, is there anybody out there who's got a fun dad story they might like to share? Oh, look, it's Billy Irwin has a fun story to share. Great. Great, so if I could get everybody's attention, uh, we got some story, it's story time now. Coco, 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 look over here. If everybody could, uh, if you're still here, if you could just go ahead and quiet down for a minute. If I could get your attention, a little shh. And then Billy's gonna say something, and if you have something you might like to say, a story about dad or something, we'd love to hear it. Just come on up and say a few words. Okay, Mama-san. Okay. Well, he was a character, a really funny man. And we had some serious talks about death and, you know, he had such a struggle. And I, I tried to keep him alive for so many years and he cooperated. <laughs> but when I asked him, I said, why do you want to, don't you want to be cremated? And guess what his answer was? It might hurt. <laughs> And as you know, he had a struggle with weight. Is Vito here? Vito, are you here? Well, anyway, Vito, there, there he is. He was, are you, I'm probably stealing your story. You were sitting there at a black tie function, maybe not black tie, but that makes it sound more fancy. And you said you turned around to talk to somebody to your right. And when you turned back around, your dessert was gone. Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> I know, and it was so funny when, you know, he he tried to hide things from me, like food, sweets especially, and I got out of the shower, we were in a hotel, got out of the shower, and there he was standing on a chair hiding all the, uh, all the sweets and everything that were in the machine from me. I said, what are you doing up there? He said, oh, nothing, nothing, you know, he tried to hide it, but... And then he lost his, uh, you know, taste for sweet, sweets, thank God. And they're not good for you, everybody. Come on. No sweets. And we have some pretty funny stories, don't we? Um, can you think of any? Oh, go, well, come tell it. No, no. You, you do it better. Come on. Okay. So, um, I don't know what it is about men, but you're... Tolerance for pain isn't real well good. And Greg, I mean, any little boo-boo he had, he would be like, ah, I'm dying, I'm dying. And um, we went on a scooter ride uh, during COVID, and I had, I had him practice in the 
garage because, you know, he's got Parkinson's. And I needed him to stop when he could stop. I was very worried about it. Plus, I was training my mom on the scooter. Oh, Lordy. So we went out outside for the big to-do, and we get going, and he got a little too far in front of me, so I ran in front of the scooter and stopped it, and he fell over to the – I mean, honestly, slow motion. He fell over. Ah, I'm dying. I'm dying. Greg, you're fine. Come on, get up. Get up. Let's go to Best Buy. <laughs> okay, he's up. <laughs> he loved – you know, you listen to my story about Best Buy. He would do anything to go to Best Buy, and that was kind of like, you know, with a – Child, if you do this, do that, we'll do, we'll, you know, you'll get rewarded. And he just, oh, my God, he would do anything for Best Buy. Cassandra will tell you. So that's my kind of funny story about Greg. Well, we used to call Cassandra because you can't buy that. I do want to take a minute to, t Cassandra, where are you? Cassandra, can you come up here, please? Okay, so this is Cassandra, and she's part of our family. And honest goodness, we wouldn't have had anything happen without her. She is uh, the wheels in motion. She makes everything happen. She was so busy this morning. I, I don't believe you made it to the. I did not. She didn't make it to the ceremony because she was here working, and she's just so so helpful to our family. She's part of our family, and we love her. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I love you. Love you too. And I hope you're with us for a long time. <laughs> My love, Cassandra. Thank you. Thank you. Great. And now my sister. Oh, okay, great. Uh, okay. Uh, go for it, Sam. I want to tell you some amazing story. Everybody know like Greg have some amazing artistic tests. And one day, you know, Greg buying some Andy Warhol, and it's been kind of green, blue faces, and calling me, said, Stanislas, maybe I'm not going to buy this stuff. And I would like to have some portrait of me and Billy. Come over in the house, we go to talk. <laughs> I said, OK. But Greg said, I'm not have very much picture, mom. Have one arm, like it very much. And then show me, like I'm coming in the house, black and white picture. This is what you see here. And said, oh, Billy's in, in the black, and I'm in red and white. Put me something like a maroon bell behind. It will be fun. And I needed stuff for my wedding party, which happened exactly in this place almost 20 years ago. And this portrait back again to the same place. And this is big glory. God bless him. My goodness. Thank you, Stanislas. Uh, my sister, Faith. Well, you guys have already heard enough from me, so I'll try to keep it brief. But there were so many things that we wanted to include, memories of dad, that were absolutely amazing. And uh, we went with childhood memories. I think me and my siblings kind of um, shared mostly about things that happened when we were very little. And I just want to say that dad remained really involved and interested uh, into our adulthood, and very much so about our education and our career trajectory, um, and really believed in us. And anyway, this is supposed to be a funny story. So let me just try to get to something a little more light. So when I was at GW um, for college, I had no clue what I would end up doing. I really wanted to be a writer. But I couldn't get into the communications program. And so I thought, you know, really, I want to go into fashion design, which was totally random. And I was really in the wrong place for that. And so dad would write me letters because we didn't have phones where we could text. And I couldn't speak to my parents because we didn't have iPhones. So. That's how we connected, old-fashioned letters. And I still have saved letters from dad where he has given me his three axioms and his three maxims. And I just remember that when I told him that I was interested in fashion design, he, um, he told me that he went to the library for seven hours to research a career in fashion design. I mean, this was obviously before you could just Google it. But 
I mean, whose father spends that kind of time in the library to look into a career that might interest his daughter? Oh my God, I love my dad so much. Thank you. Eric? Yeah. Awesome. Great. You guys, do you want the uh, over? He wants us over there. Oh, great. All right. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Ned. I'm uh, Greg's grandson. It's my brother Max. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> also a grandson. Um, <clears throat> he was a really good grandfather. Um, one of the our fondest memories with him, um, we were visiting here in Aspen, and he was riding on his tricycle, and we were all sort of going down um, one of the main streets in Aspen, and um, you know he was waving and saying hello to everyone who knew him, and we passed by the fire station, and there were some firefighters outside, and he kind of pulled over to start talking to them, and me and Max had no idea what was going on, um, but eventually it came to be clear that he was trying to purchase a fire truck. <laughs> Um, from the How much? yeah, from the fire station. How much for the fire truck? Yeah, these these two were probably like what five and seven at the time, and they were just like, did Grandpa just offer to buy a fire truck? Yeah, and he's he's sitting in his tricycle, you know, like laying back, you know, offering to hand out you know some money to these guys. And there was like a bright green fire truck, and they were like, no, you know, they're not for sale. And he was like, what about that one? What about the the ugly highlighter colored one? And they they said, you know, some some large sum of money and he starts pedaling away and we're walking away and I remember um, he, he turned his head back and yelled at them, uh, if the phone don't ring, you'll know it's me. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, Grandpa. Who's up next? Somebody must have a fun memory they want to share. Well, I presume everybody already got their country western songs. There, there's a note of them here, but they've they've been a uh, favorite in our family for a long time. I, I encourage you all to get your own copy uh, and buy the album. But I'll I'll share a few of my favorites. I'm so miserable without you. It's like having you here. These are the these are the <laughs> top 25 country and western songs. And Greg would bring this with him wherever he goes. Oh yes, let me give you my business card. Um, another one of my favorites was a. How can I miss you if you won't go away? <laughs> um, let's see. I, I, should, I should have shot you. Yeah, which one is that? Oh, yeah. If I'd shot you when I wanted to, I'd be out by now. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. I still miss you, baby, but my aim's getting better. <laughs> Say that again, Billy. Oh, you're the reason our kids are so ugly. That sounds like a great song. <laughs> uh, my, my, what? All right, and one final. My wife ran, ran off with my best friend, and I sure do miss him. Please get your own. They're on the table up here. Okay, cool. Here you go. Yeah, it's funny. Oh, people want to hear stories. Well, I don't know if anybody, probably everybody here has been to two or three parties at Greg and Billy's down in the great theater that they have. And I was down there. And I think it was a football game, one of these national football games. We were watching this. I had a lovely date with me. And Greg has this little room there, like a confession place. You can actually go in this room and you can, um, you know, call your girlfriend and say, oh, I'm at the airport. Or, you know, oh, I'm something. He has little recordings in there that would actually you know, pretend like you were there. Well, the date and I went past the little room into the back part. And I don't know, there was all kind. Billy has all these things. You know, there used to be a thing here called the beach party. And there were bikinis and different things there. And this gal's trying them on and stuff. And all of a sudden, somebody...
don't feel like it. <laughs> I think he's funny. Who? Anybody else? Raise your hand. I'll come to you. Okay. So I'm one of the grandsons, Justin, um, Greg, myself, and my mom all went to the Dolly Museum, the new one in St. Pete, just for a day to kind of go see some art exhibits and just have a little bit of fun. And when you kind of first went in, they actually had a like area where you could just watch some videos, and they were actually doing a like sort of documentary about Andy Warhol. And... <laughs> Greg got very infatuated with it in the very short 30 minutes, and he gets on the phone. And he starts speaking pretty loudly to somebody on the phone. And you're not supposed to have a phone in the museum. That was the big rule. Right. And someone comes down and basically escorts him out because he can't be on the phone. And eventually we get out with him and ask him what he was doing. Why, why are you making this phone call? And he was actually purchasing a Warhol over the phone during the documentary. <laughs> he was very creative when he wanted to get something done. Yeah, he, so. he saw it and he wanted it. Yeah, and he did it. So. Awesome. If there's anybody else, you want to raise your hand? Okay, great. You look beautiful. Oh, you, look great. you look beautiful. Are we supposed to stand over here? Come here, Dad, uh, Mom. Stand over here. We have to tell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Greg had a little bit of dementia. It wasn't really all that bad. However, um, I was afraid he'd, he'd uh, uh, what? He'd, he'd break our cover. He'd do whatever. Anyway, he'd blow our cover. And the deal was a dessert, after, it was always his birthday. Everywhere we went. Everywhere we went. Any time me. of the day. In, any, time. any day. And I said, don't say it's not our birthday because of the dementia. So, and he loved desserts. I mean, he really loved desserts. And my mom, you know, she was the dessert. What? Nazi. Nazi. <laughs> I guess you said it. Can't have a dessert. Sorry. I know. And, uh. But he loved going out to dinner, and so we were in Hawaii like two years ago, and we went out to dinner, and and at the end of the dinner it was his birthday. So they bring the candles, we'd sing Happy Birthday, and, every night. And then the next day we'd go out, the candle would come, Happy Birthday, he'd get his dessert, and um, this was our tradition. We would always go out and sing him Happy Birthday. So Happy Birthday, Happy Birthday. We love you. Hope he's eating a lot of desserts up there. I do, I do want is Rick here? Rick. Rick. Here he comes. I would like for you to sing a tribute to Greg uh, because he loves you so much. He sure. loves you from heaven, and he loves you so much, and he wants to hear you sing. He's gonna play. And He's gonna play with the band. Oh, okay. In a, right. in a few minutes. And, all right. Yeah. All right. Please, please stay because Rick and and Jeff are gonna sing. Yeah. We have a show going on. I'm not gonna sing. You're lucky. <laughs> okay. Is there anybody else that wants to share any stories? I'm happy to bring the mic to you if you'd rather not get up. Putting people on the spot. Tim Kincaid? <laughs> Just kidding. Anybody else? Yes, my niece. Beautiful. Okay, my story isn't quite as good. I'm just warning you guys. But I remember last summer, this was very recently, um, so Greg's mind was not the greatest, I guess, in comparison to the rest of his years. But I always viewed him as one of the smartest people I knew. And um, I remember one night, me and one of his caretakers, Rogelio, were trying to get him to bed, and he did not want to go to bed. And it got to be like 11 o'clock or something, and we knew that he needed to go to bed. Um, so we tried to take him upstairs and everything, but he decided that he needed to fix the garage opener that no one could fix that day. So we sat in the garage for an hour arguing about the fact that he could not fix the garage opener that he thought he could fix. And uh, he sat there and sat there, and we, 
literally for an hour just argued back and forth. And he didn't fix it, but in the end, he told me that I would make a great attorney. <laughs> so he did eventually go to bed, and that's all. Oh, good, Christy Lee. All right, Jeff, I have something to tell you, but it's not going to be near as funny as everybody else. Okay, I remember when we were up at the, uh, what's the party called? What's the party called up at the top of the mountain? The Aspen Blow. The Aspen Blow party. Okay, we're at the Aspen Blow, and everybody's had a few drinks, and everybody's dancing, and I could see Billy kind of really eyeing Greg Irwin, and feel, and I could just see the chemistry going on, and what was happening back then, and he had just ended a relationship with a crazy woman, so we probably all remember that, so anyway... We get, Bill, my husband, and I get home, and I said, Bill, I think Billy and Greg are going to become an item. And Bill said, you know what? You just drink too much. You need to get a handle on yourself. <laughs> Here we are today. Women's intuitive is always right. We love you, Billy. We loved you and Greg together. Hugs and kisses. There you go, Jeff. <laughs> okay. Ruth, you want to say something? Thank you. Cool. <laughs> Hello. I am Greg's niece. He called me Ruther. And he... Can't hear you. you can't hear me? Is that better? So I was Ruther to Greg. I'm his niece. Back? No. Closer? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's that? I'll tell one story. You want to tell a story? Okay. I'm Judy Francis. I've known uh, Billy since she was born almost, and Greggy. And Christy was just up here, so I wanted to tell the bachelorette party that we had that many of the guys here, I don't think you were dancing, Peter, but Bob was, and many of them, because we couldn't find Chippendales for Christy's bachelorette party. So Greg and I planned the party in the infamous basement <laughs> and with the sound machine that we couldn't work. And we didn't. But I think Christy still has all those videos. And Greg and I, and I think Billy helped too, had a effing unbelievable time. Love you, Billy. It was so funny. They pretended to be Chippendales. These were Aspen guys. Cute Aspen guys. And they were stuck. Uh, there's one girl that there's one girl that really liked one of the Chippendales, and she sent us a case of champagne just so she could be invited. And then they were an item, but uh, we had so many fun times. Ruthie, yeah. this is Greg's favorite niece. He doesn't have any others, does he? Uh, <laughs> not from our side of the family. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, so we. That my mom is uh, Greg's sister, and our families spent every holiday together. We did everything together as we were growing up, and we had so much fun. And mom and Uncle Greg were the king and queen of holidays. So as the years went by, um, <laughs> Uncle Greg came to Denver when I lived there, and I recently had been divorced. He took me to a comedy club. It was Halloween time. And the next morning, I woke up, and I got in my car to go to work, scared the shit out of me. There was a stuffed Dracula, life-size, in the back of my car that he put there. And he was always just doing really fun things, and that, though, just struck out as something classically Uncle Greg. So. Great. Anybody else? Yeah, Peter. Awesome. Oh, don't kill yourself. <laughs> hello, hello. Where are you? Over there. there you are. Okay. Uh, when Greg started to get like me, where he's losing his memory and mind, we were down in, in Florida, at Sarasota, I think. It's, and we went over to this circle place that have dinner. And uh, Greg says, I got to get something. I says, What do you want? He says, Well, it's over across the street. So I go, we get out of the sneak away from the dinner. 
and go across the street. We start going into these little shops. And he said, would you hold this for me? He'd buy this. And then we'd go to another. Would you hold this thing for me? And we'd go to another. And they went all the way around that circle, Ambarius Circle or something like that. And um, then he said, hold on to this stuff. I said, why? He says, I don't want Billy to know I got it. <laughs> but we love him. Awesome. Anybody else want to share a story about Dad? OK, great. Awesome. I just have one little one. Um, Dad and Billy had two scooters in Florida. And because Billy thought she might need one at some point, uh, which turns out she underestimated herself because she doesn't. Uh, <laughs> And so one time we, we went around, we were tooling around in the garage, just racing each other in the garage. And dad figured out how to get out of the garage, which was terrifying. And so we ended up racing all over the Sarasota landscape. And it was so much fun. We were laughing. And of course, everybody was fine in the end. It was great. So, uh, But we love you, dad. We're so happy uh, to have had you in our lives and appreciate you so much. Did you want to say something too? OK, great. Well, um, <clears throat> I want to speak uh, on behalf of all his friends. Greg was so amazing. He was so smart, like everybody knows and everything. But he was so helpful. He was so helpful for me, who, is, who was completely senile about um, computers and many things. And I go to bed very late, and him and I <clears throat> were on the phone at three or four in the morning sometimes. And he was always there helping at any time and at any party, you know, he made a great fuss of me, which he would do out of anybody else. And I want to thank God for bringing such a human being into everybody's life. I will miss you, Greg. Oh, yeah. Oh, Hi. Beyond. Now, say your name. What's your name? Come on. Don't be shy. She can sit on my lap. Why okay. You, you sit on her. No. There we go. Okay. Uh-oh. 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 Okay. I, I have a million stories, but I've got to tell this one. About uh, five years gre ago, Greg almost passed because they had a terrible UTI. And he was a month and a half in the hospital. And we took him to the best uh, uh, rest home to recuperate. And our club, Sarasota Yacht Club, just happened to be right next to the rehab. And so when no one was looking, and he was in Smith Care, which is like, uh, you know, skilled nursing. And uh, he decided he was going to break out. <laughs> and he did. He did, honestly. Okay, it, uh, Sarasota Yacht Club's right next to this, and they had one little gate that happened to be open, so I guess a uh, maintenance man left it open. And so he actually had curb service, because they have the little four-wheelers that take you around. And he said, well, I'm, I'm visiting here, but I want to go over there. Can you take me? And he was believable. And they took him, and he had lunch. I mean, he was really sick. And he had lunch, and he came back, and they found out because they were all over the place looking for him. <laughs> MIA, you know, and, uh, and uh, they did board that up. It's never, <laughs> nobody could ever break through again. <laughs>